This episode is powered by denmeditation.com. The meditation is the primary focus. The bigger goal is for people to understand and love themselves, thus creating more harmony in the community at large. To find out more about Den Meditation's teacher training programs, retreats, and all things Den Meditation, go to denmeditation.com. Welcome to Den Talks Podcast. This is Tal. I'm your host, and I'm the founder of Den Meditation. You know, today we do what I think we do best. We just have like a really cool conversation. I have Bryant Wood here. He's an incredible breathwork practitioner, spiritual leader. He's really fun, a ton of energy, and some incredible insights. And we kind of hit it all. Um, what I love about it, though, we really dive into it, talking about it through the angle of he is one of a triplet set. A tri- what do you, how do you say that? Set of triplets? I don't even know, but I'm sure I'll get a million DMs telling me how I should have said it better. But he is a triplet. And so we really talked about kind of relationships through that perspective, which I think is very relatable to everybody, whether you have a sibling or don't, but kind of even a lover, it's like this deep connection of someone you're connected to and how do you navigate it? And through there, we really got into healing and growth and evolution and how do you process those feelings that you hold in your body and what does that mean? I mean, we really cover the gamut here and I love it. It's an interesting conversation. I think you guys are going to enjoy it. He is a ton of fun to listen to, very easy to listen to, and has so much wisdom that he shares. And I really appreciate his time. Let us know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe, DM us, go onto our Facebook page if you'd like to join there, but definitely share and also tell us what you want because we'd love to keep interviewing people that you are interested in hearing from. Have a beautiful day and enjoy the episode. Oh oh my God. Well, hello. Welcome. Hi, thank you so much. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? Doing good. Doing really good. Yeah. Grateful to be on this call. I'm excited. Yeah, me too. So talk to me a little bit. Where are you from? Um, born in Texas, raised in Northern California. Where in Texas were you born? And that's an interesting... So born in Texas, raised in Northern. How did that happen? Uh, Dallas, Texas. You know, it was the typical heartbreak that kind of moved everybody into different states and um, ended up being raised in Northern California tiny little home, you know, my triplet brothers and I and my little sister and then my stepdad and then his son. And wait, hold on. Did you say triplet brothers? Yeah. Triplet. And then you and a little sister. And then a little sister as well. So she's like, she's like, I would say she's, she's so, I mean, again, we can't really understand what affects, you know, what kind of things to what behaviors to be created in each individual, but she's so well balanced and like, secure and you know she just gets things done in a a way that my brothers and I never really had the chance to even figure out you know she's also a girl (laughs) girl. yeah it could 100% be it right (laughs) so you're part of a triplet that's amazing oh yeah it's a little team a little team of people that just decided to do life together and how talk to me about what are you guys all like different same like interests what parts of the triangle do you guys hold yeah, it, it, it's interesting. It, it's it's like a you know it's like the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit in a way kind of energy, um, and we were all born this on December twenty first, so the winter That's solstice. My brother's birthday. Oh really? Oh cool! Yeah. I love that. It's really it's a powerful day, very powerful day. Very. And um, you know, I mean, there's so many uh, like dynamics that go on with how we've um, kind of been brought up through the three of us, like I could go for hours just psychoanalyzing these concepts because my main intention, like turning 22, starting meditation, I was like, oh, family is the most important thing on the planet. There's really nothing else that is that important compared to healing, protecting, supporting, and being a part of a, like a, a community, a family. So now going back, and it's been about you know seven years, I'm 29 years old and doing some really amazing like focused healing work on my family. We're so tight and supportive and loving. It's like I couldn't even comprehend that life could be this good mm. in regards to like a little tribe. Um, so to answer your question, like what my brothers are like, um, I would say Richard's kind of – so Richard and James are – they're like both a part of me and as I am a part of them, but they're more of like 
I have, I have most of them within me, but they are more themselves, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So Richard is, uh, I call him a little master because he can look at a tree and just be so happy. He's like, I, one time I saw him dance at a club. There was not one person in the club. It was just him <laughs> dancing. He danced for three hours by himself. I was embarrassed. I was like, Richard, this is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Like you're just dancing. And he's like, he's not the, he, he's good now, but at the time he wasn't that good, you know, but his ability to like cultivate joy and feed off that joy is just ex extraordinary. And now he's a firefighter in South Korea in the Air <laughs> Force. A firefighter. I love it. Oh no. He still wears a firefighter outfit and still dances. It's a, you know, it's a side business. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, it is, so James, um, you know, he, he had a little tougher, um, and I call him kind of like the tortured artist, but he's also the most brilliant and the most sensitive. Um, so he's navigating his sensitivity in the world that isn't conducive to nope. holding him and his gifts. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he's also like just the, the sweetest, but he's just constantly like shedding layers and and um, and figuring out who he is. Right. Because when you have one trip at like myself, that's really outgoing, I end up speaking for the other two most of their lives. So then there's an aspect of them trying to figure out how to communicate and relate to the world um, because they didn't have that practice at an early age. Now, and that's really interesting, but it sounds like you guys actually have a very healthy relationship. Is there any resentment? Like, do any of them feel like you've taken their voice or is there just, is it just a really healthy understanding of the roles you all play? Yeah, now it's, it's ex extremely healthy. I mean, you know, one of the things that I learned is how to include people in life. I moved out at 15 years old and, and then they started growing into more of themselves and getting friends and playing sports. And then when I came back, I, I, I realized I'm like, Hey, it's not about me anymore. I mean, I was like, I, you know, I was traveling the world doing all these things. I would just start sharing and sharing all the stuff I was doing. And then I'm like, wow, this is kind of lame of me to just continue to do it. I mean, there's nothing that I have to prove. I, no one really even cares that I'm doing these things. You know what I mean? And I just got really hyper curious of what goes on in their hearts, what goes on in their mind, and most importantly, trying to create unique experiences to illuminate their gifts and allow them to express themselves. And, you know, they love me so much. It's, it's just, it's just, it's amazing. You can't talk about it. It's like, I'll look at James and we'll just start crying on the spot. I'll grab his arm. I'll like I'll always do like some weird little shamanic thing where I'll put my hand on the back of his neck and I'll be like, all right, breathe into my hand, you know, calm your nervous system. Like this is a way of being like you, you, you have the control. You're that powerful, you know, and we sit like in a very present moment because, you know, he's really learning with the sensitivity, how to interact out of the state of anxiety and fight or flight. And as soon as we get into that state, it's like, he just draws me into this, such a deep connection and, you know, me not having that depth in this lifetime would be it would be I would be very not interested in life itself because I really desire that depth. So the universe kind of g gave me this experience of just complete uh, like discovery of truth in a very difficult but very beautiful way. And how was it in a difficult way for you? Well, because as a kid, James, I mean, I love it. We're talking about this. I don't talk about this really ever in this, in this depth, but you know, Welcome it's to talks. <laughs> Ten talks. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, my family. I'm like, okay, uh, it was good. I mean, we've done a lot of healing work around it. Um, the, why that it was difficult. Um, mm, there's so many reasons why, uh, interacting with your family is difficult and everyone has their own unique experience of that um, wisdom from that and and it, it, it came from like in the beginning let's say it was difficult to get along right mm, it's extremely sure. difficult to get along and then now it's difficult because you love so much and you don't want to see them hurting right um and there's nothing that you wouldn't give or do to support that soul along their path and energetically, anyone that's done the work and ancestrally, we know that our energy or your energy is your energy. My energy is my energy. And I'm ultimately not um, in charge of doing anything at all for that person, right? Even if it's the person that you love the most in the world, sometimes it's best to let them kind of pursue whatever behavior and experience that they want. And then just be there if you want. You know, anytime you try to educate or guide or tell, there is um, 
I would say there's, you're putting a bandaid on something that needs to be self-discovered and, hmm. and that person needs to gain their power back from that behavior so they can be the fullest expression of themselves. And this whole universe is designed where if you're in chaos, the chaos will get worse and worse until you finally find order. So you can't have like brother coming in and trying to like, you know, Hello. help things. Hello. So that's why it's been difficult. But again, through that difficulty, difficulty is that depth, is that love. And, you know, you guys hear me? it's totally worth living because of it. Like figuring out how important family is. And I really recommend that everyone at least meditates on the discovery of what family means to them. Right. What is the importance of that in my life? And a lot of the times, if it's hard to face, then do your, you know, as long as it's not too triggering for the nervous system, still do your best to face all the things that you haven't really looked at yet, because that's where um, you're hiding a lot of your power, right? Anything that makes you cringe in life, it's an Easter egg for you to reclaim your power back from. So when I realized, I'm like, oh, I've been kind of treating my family poorly, and I have been the best version of myself within that aspect of life, and it's one of the most important aspects of life from my from my belief system. And I was like, okay, then I took it upon myself. And this is like everybody on their journey. It's like when someone has a spiritual awakening in the family, the first thing they do is they go back into the family and just try to share all the things that they learned. Yeah, so your teacher like, like, you have to do this. Yeah, yeah. So I tried that. Uh, I tried that like one or two visits, you know, and then, and then quickly, you know, I, I study human behavior and I always look to how people react to the things that I do. So I'm always analyzing patterns and experience. And I realized I'm like, oh, me telling them to change or to be different is actually a very lesser productive way of me operating. So when I came back the third time, I just loved them exactly the way that they are. And I held them in whatever expression that they wanted to be. Simultaneously, I didn't sacrifice my own authenticity. And I just kept just giving gratitude for all the little things that they did were, that were good. And I was like, oh, yeah. So talk about how you did that, though, because that's hard for a lot of people, like that idea of you know, just accept everyone for who they are, which is, I think people understand it, but then they get into that moment. They go home for Thanksgiving, they go home to the family and that same trigger comes up, that same shit someone's pulling. And, you know, it's so easy to go into the blame game and then it creates kind of that fissure again in that distance to so talk about how, or it's the opposite. Someone's like, I'm really going to work on this and it's accept, accept to the point what you hinted at of losing their own selves because they're giving so much to try and keep someone else on where they are. So how do you strike that balance and how do you actually practice it in the beginning? Let's start with the practice. That's right. It's all about the training that then prepares you for the, the experience. And this experience is always going to manifest. So anything that you're training for, just know that you'll use the training. <laughs> um, always. Always, 100% of the time. Um, and for the ones that decide to train for it, I get, I bow to you because that is a very moral and worthy goal to do that. Um, I would say you know, the aspect of like really training, leaning into it, you know, it always starts from within and, you know, it's, it's, it's hilarious to hear that kind of, right? Because there's so much outside of us. And if you look on the most subtlest of level um, from, from our senses, not on the subtlest, subtlest of level, the entire world is our perception. Everything is. And when we perceive anything in the world, we're judging an aspect of ourselves. So when you want to have a higher vibration perspective of the planet, which will ultimately help you manifest uh, amazing things beyond your possible imagination right now, you want to look at your own behaviors first. So instead of anybody else's behaviors and what they're doing, be hyper curious of who you are within this experience, so-called life. And most importantly, when you're in a certain experience, how are you behaving? Like what is being brought up within your own being when you're interacting with that texture of experience? And when you look at all the bad things that you've done, and I use bad as almost a blessing. Like I love your bad. I love your shit. I love your fuckery. I love your chaos. I bow to that too. It's very sacred for you to show me your bad because at some level I have an aspect of your power um, in a way. And we're here to learn how to then reclaim that together. So when you look at your less productive behaviors, and that's really what it is, just a less productive behavior, you can then find that it's very easy if you lean into it to love yourself no matter what, because you're only acting out of your own pain and your own ignorance in those moments. So really, there's nothing that you could have done other than what you did. 
And to simplify that is your energy at the core is what's creating your perception, it's creating your behaviors, it's creating your destiny. Your free will is how well you take care of the energy at the core that's manifesting that expression of what you think you are. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, keep going. <laughs> and feel free to disagree with me if this doesn't apply to your direct experience. <laughs> you know, I'm always like, if it rings true, use it. If it doesn't, let it go. But that being said, when you accept yourself fully and you really look at the stuff that you did and let's say that i cheated on a girl right which i've done i cheated on a girl and i'm like oh but you know i should have done it because you know she did this to me or you know xyz that's not a productive way of reflecting when you do something bad and I, again i use bad very yep. lightly everybody it's hard not to because this is how we yeah. Have, we perceive it. it. It's conditioning mm -hmm. for me to perceive these things, but it's also how we're going to relay this information. So when I'm perceiving my own behavior of something that I'm like, I probably shouldn't have done that. Simultaneously, I'm justifying why I did it. Let go of the justification of that behavior. Just be like, Bryant, you okay, cheated yeah. on a girl. You are a cheater. You are a cheater. That's what you are right now. And when you begin to acknowledge exactly what it is, I'm a thief, I'm mean, I'm a bully, right? And you really get to the core of the core of what actually that behavior was, you're beginning to make friends with it, forgive yourself and transmute it into a higher state of expression. Well, if everyone would even for a second who's listening, even try it, because I think the minute you even use those words, like I am a cheater or I, whatever it is, you can feel it immediately where that feeling of either shame or anger or whatever sits in your body. Immediately, the minute you actually embrace it, like you said, when you actually embrace that idea versus doing any type of verbiage that keeps you kind of distanced from actually owning it. Like you were saying, whether it's like, well, she deserved it or she did this first or, you know, it was already, we weren't getting along or we hadn't slept together in months. So it doesn't really, whatever the excuses are, and they all might be valid excuses, but however, if you get to that place of honest truth of what it was you did, you'll feel it immediately that there's a different acceptance in your body. And I, to your point, that's the place from only there can you actually transmute something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And again, even, you know, you took it a layer, even I would say in the right direction. Um, when we're able to just analyze what it is it's just very clearly, we can feel it in our body. And then most importantly, we can release it somatically. So the most productive ways to release any sort of behavior and kind of reprogram your energy system is either through somatically through the body or through the soul. It's not really intellectually through your mind. The mind is a very yeah. simple tool to change radio stations. If it was That's intellectually it. through the mind, I would be the clearest fucking person in history. Oh, my mind so works very well. <laughs> Amazing. I that. I'm like, if only this was the end of the healing, I would have it all down pat. <laughs> oh, that's impressive, though. The mind's a little. Ugh. But it's not. It gets in the way, is my point. It's like that you can only that. take it so far. And then you're like, yeah. but it keeps getting in the way. Yeah, makes sense. Keep going. Sorry to interrupt. Somatically, you were saying, or through the soul. Yeah, or through the soul. And somatically is a good way to start because, um, you know, moving your body, breathing, meditating. Um, what it does is it begins to break up the density of the thought patterns and then it go and you take yourself a, a layer deeper within the self and you go into the emotional body and then you can feel the actual sensation of the thought pattern. The thought pattern is what's holding that sensation in place. So when you're able to, and there's so many different tools for this, I could go, you know, a billion different directions, but when you're able to just, okay, this uh, shame of me being a cheater lives on my shoulder. Okay. All right, I feel it. I begin to bring my awareness to it, right? And your awareness is in everything, but it's also something that is constantly viewing the playground of your mind, but it is in everything. So you hyper-focus awareness into your shoulder, right? As if you're thinking a thought, but you focus on sensation. And then you're like, all right, what is the size of this? Okay, and you really begin to just recognize it, face it. What is the shape of it? Okay, it's like this little like foggy thing, right? I actually have something in my shoulder. <laughs> so I'm just thinking right now. <laughs> We're witnessing a miracle. <laughs> like, we could do this to everybody, though. We could do it to someone right now. But uh, what is the what is the color, right? And then you what's still your, really what's your color. What is the color, right? You just get really clear on what it is, you know. And then you begin to send it 
you know, into the heavens, feel it uh, alleviate into the sky. And if it's not going up into the sky when you're fully facing it, then you can focus, use your breath. And that normally clears it. And let's say, okay, if it's still not clearing it, then what is the opposite of express expression of that shame? Well, you know, it's integrity. Okay. So what does integrity look like, feel like, and what is the color of integrity to me? And then I breathe in a way that empowers my entire nervous system to feel integrity. And then that shame dissolves into a foundational state of integrity, an unfuckable with state of integrity. And then, you know, you, you leap into who you truly want to be, which is someone that's just present in the moment, not worrying about, you know, these things. So talk about someone who might listen to this and be like, but that's bullshit. You still cheated on someone that doesn't just make you go away. What would your response be? Yeah. Um, let's see. Hey, this is a complicated one. <clears throat> <laughs> this is a complicated one. It's a complicated one because at some level, um, you know, it's, it's unique to everybody's journey. I would say what I did was, uh, you know, 90% of the time I had a conversation about what I did and I faced it you know, and then 10% of the time I really felt into it. I'm like, it's better that I just move on and do the best I possibly can for the next relationship. You know, granted, I haven't dealt with any of these things for, you know, many, many years, but I believe that's because I put the work in and, you know, my dad was a cheater and I got that behavior. Granted, I'm not putting it on him, but I actually had to call my dad and like, yo, dad, I get how you could have cheated. You know, I totally how was, get it. Was that a healing moment for well, how was your relationship with your dad fractured? I, I know you moved to North to Northern California. Was it a fractured relationship? I don't necessarily believe believe in like <laughs> fractured. Um, I would say like, you know, there's you know pieces of ourselves that, you know, you can kind of bring back in. You can like you know a piece of yourself can be over there, and you can like bring it back in. You know, in a way. So like, I don't know if that makes sense, but that's yeah. what it feels like to me. Um, yeah, my dad. I mean, it was weird. I had a totally different experience of my dad than my brothers did. And my dad had a totally different experience of what happened than me, like completely different experience. Um, so, you know, moving on at 15 years old. And then I remember like the first like six months of me being gone, for some reason in my head, I told myself a story that my parents didn't call me. Like I was just out there by myself. No one checked in on me at all. <laughs> you know? And, um, and I carried that with me until, you know, my early 20s, 21, 22. And then meditating, when I got the ping, that family is an extremely important thing. It didn't really is everybody take some time to look at it, figure out what it means to you. Um, but then I realized, all right, here are all my judgments and perceptions of my family individually and also collectively, the collective conditioning of it. I'm going to set some time aside to uh, transcribe. This is what I believe about my dad. I'm going to take a moment before I call my dad to project onto him what I feel. I'm going to see if I can see it from a higher perspective. If I see him, I'm going to see if I can see it from his perspective, then I'm going to see if I can see it from God's perspective or the universe or, you know, whoever. And when I reflected on that, I really had like so many understandings about him that I didn't before. So it allowed me to really calm down when I was about to kind of go after him to heal this thing, because all I knew is like, I need to have a discussion about this. I'm carrying this in my body. I don't want to think my dad's a dirtbag because I know he's really not. You know what I mean? And I, I called him and, you know, we had, we had the conversation and, and we were able to kind of clear that cord. And then granted, that was a huge part of me forgiving myself to, uh, of what I, of the things that I cheated on in the past as well, you know, and that's a, that's one way to do it. You know, ideally, um, I think there's an aspect of having like a, a subtle aspect of, of having regret that it's important. And then there's yeah. a subtle aspect knowing that you're constantly just communicating with the one you're constantly just communicating with yourself. You following me? Yeah. yeah. I mean, and allowing, giving yourself the allowance of growth and learning, right? I oh. mean, it's, it's like you, we can't grow if we're not fucking up at times. Fall forward. Yeah. So it's like, it's, yes, you carry the regret, but it's also, like you said, it sounds like from what you said, you're much more present in relationships now um, than you would have been if you didn't do that work. Yeah. I would have been suffering for a long time. I probably would have lost someone that I really loved, you know? How, um, so then just to go back before we move forward, cause I do want to talk about that. You said, you know, somatically and soul, 
talk about the soul a little bit. So, you know, one of my specialties is breath work. It's my highest excitement. I can create really cool emotional arcs for people that, that, uh, is so fun to give them the tools to, to really create that for themselves, to show mm -hmm. people what they can do within their own everything. Right. And when I say you either want to listen, release it somatically or through the soul and you know, I'm not here to try to define the soul because that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it is true. I'm always like, please, nobody yeah. ask me that question. Yeah, <laughs> and I can, I can, I have been in a very many, many, many expanded states that you feel connected to everything that is, right? You know, you kind of dissolve into this oneness experience. It's, it's extremely beautiful. Um, and then you're changed by it when you have that expanded experience. You have now more expanded uh, perception of reality. Um, and Breathwork originally was designed, you know, 8,000 years ago, you know, Patanjali just, he's like, Hey, let's use breathwork to deepen our states of meditation. So at the core of every single breathwork, the most productive thing you can do is use breathwork to go really deep within the self, really, really deep within the self. And there's thousands of different textures of breathwork that all do incredible things. And each thing it does helps you heal something that then eventually allows you to go deeper within yourself, right? And I'm not talking about the masculine version of spaciousness where it's like, be empty, you know, be empty, don't feel your emotions. No, I'm talking about the fullest expression of who you are and the emptiness that exists within the fullest expression of who you are. You following me? Yep. And when you go into the depth of the depth of the center of the center of the center of the center of your heart, then from that state, your something remembers itself in you or as you, and then eventually heals, you know, everything, like almost instantly, there's as if a whiteout, everything goes back into place, you know, from your deepest heart's desire. Mm. And everyone will notice, and I'd love your perspective on this as well, um, at Healing Through the Soul, I'd love for you to talk on this. But everyone knows when we're in, you know, let's say, you know, three hours goes by and me and you have a pretty hard day, you know, from for, for us, like it's very specifically designed to be hard for us. And then we're just in our minds and we're navigating reality and we're talking, and we're listening to loud music and we're like doing all these things, we're probably drinking a lot of coffee. You know, we're acting at a surface level of conditioning. We're truly acting from a state of what we think we're supposed to be and what the world's telling us that it is. And when you're making decisions from that place, it's good, but you can only move, you can only transform your life so much in the moment. Mm -hmm. When you let go of the surface level of conditioning, as if on top of an ocean, it's dirty, you go deep, deep, deep within the ocean, right? You connect into the energy, the depth of the ocean, then without, in the most effortless, quickest, most fun possible way, you are now filled with a connection of consciousness that then restructures all of reality for your highest good. And most importantly, empowers you to be the best version of yourself because you took the time to create that foundational state of expansion, of love, of, of joy, whatever it is. So that's what I mean by healing through the soul. You know, there's many ways to get there. And the importance of spending time in those spaces is the same thing of if we're interacting in the world and we're just going like this, it's cool. But what if you went inside yourself so deep that you found that there's only unconditional love and bliss and you spent hours there and you let your consciousness be born from bliss mm -hmm. and now you just see the world from that fucking state. And it's funny because I find that um, a lot of people who kind of refuse to go there, which is okay, we all do what we need to do when we need to do it. But you know, I have I know people who kind of like hold on tight and refuse to kind of go there. And it always makes me giggle because I'm like, but you need it the most. It's like, I mean, we all need it, but it's like that idea of what you're afraid of is exactly what you need. And it's, you know, in letting go, I agree when you can hit those states um, where you can actually get that remembrance of who you are beyond all the structure around us, all the outside mm -hmm. stuff, all of the opinions, all of, you know, the programming that we have when you can get that remembrance of like, oh yeah, this is all just kind of a little bit of a game. And when I can remember I'm playing it, mm. then that makes, reminds me that I have a lot of choices in this and I'm not stuck mm. because what happens at the end of games, we throw it up and we can start over. You know, you lose some, you win some, you know? And I feel like sometimes it gives you 
that perspective when you can go into the soul. And I think it allows you, again, it doesn't mean you're not playing the game, which doesn't mean, you know, there's not some ladders to walk up. There's not some shoots to go down. It doesn't mean that mm. it's not hard, but you have this lightness about how you go through it. I find mm. it's um, a remembrance that you are totally capable and totally able to handle all of it. Fuck yes. What's your process for that? Well, part of it is uh, a little bit, I love breath work too. So I do Kundalini yes. and I teach Kundalini. So it's so innately good. part of it. And anyone who knows who comes to my classes, it's rare. They're not going through a day of just a shit ton of breath of fire. So um, I find breath work, especially for someone like me, which I already alluded to my brain mm -hmm. is constantly, you know, which I tell people as a teacher, everyone's like, I, I can't just sit there. I'm like, oh my God. It's like, some of us are just built that way. It's okay. Like meditation doesn't have to be this totally blank slate. Like if you're a thinker, you're a thinker. There's not much you can mm -hmm. do about it, but you can learn to circumvent it or let it work for you or mm -hmm. feel more so that your feeling can kind of help you kind of navigate around it. Um, and I think breath work, I agree with you in that sense. So I'd love for you to talk more about it is such an incredible way, especially for people who get distracted easily, it gives you such a point of focus and something to do that then mm. allows you to kind of just cut through all of the craziness that's around you. Mm -hmm. So breath work's a huge one for me. I'm also, I love visualization. Um, so I'm big on mm. just simply connecting, you know, through tubes of light. I do a lot of that. Um, and that really helps me because, you know, depending what I choose to do or what I do with my clients, whether it's connecting up or connecting down, depending what's needed. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's a, a little bit of everything. Again, it just reminds you you're part of something much bigger. And even though the weight of what you're carrying in that moment may feel too heavy or too much, um, in those moments, you realize they're just little bits of food, you know, to help you get to that next place. You know, and they can be eaten and they can be transmuted and it can be then mm. shifted. It's not rocks or boulders that you have to like hold in a sack, you know, there it's something mm. for you. But that's mm. all, like you said, it's all perspective. I think you mm -hmm. said that in the beginning of the conversation. It's all your perspective that you bring to every moment. And the problem is when the things on the outside start to feel too much, we lose the perspective, right? That's when the perspective gets cloudier because we get too caught up in the, you know, our physical incarnation, which is normal. That's what we're here. That's the balance of what we're here to do. So what are the tools? So for me, it's breath work. For you, it's breath work. It's visualization and really reminding myself that perspective is a huge part of it to help me try and get out of what I always say. It's like when you can feel the suit, like you're wearing the suit really heavy, that's when I know mm -hmm. it's time to kind of shift. The mm -hmm. suit starts to feel a little lighter. Mm -hmm. That's when I'm like, okay, I'm in a better balance of my physicality and you know, my energetic being. Like, but, cause you're still physical. Like we can't pretend we can just float around like angels the whole time. Cause we're here. We chose to be here for a reason, but um, what's that balance? And sometimes we're all human you can feel you're really fucking human sometimes. And that's when it's like, how can we you know, remind ourselves that there's a little, you know, we've got that energy within us too, to like pull us a little bit lighter. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's so many good points there. I love that. I love the tubes of light, you know, and oh. it's, 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 it's fascinating. The more, you know, the more healing you do, just like uh, you said is, we become lighter and lighter and more sensitive to energy. So, you know, when you start off, you might feel like, you know, you've been through a human experience, right? Like you've been through 45 years of, you know, pretty intense emotions without any real processing yeah. of those emotions. And they're kind of stuck in your little, you know, bubble of, or aura. And you're like, how do I move? It's like heavy and thick. And, you know, it's, it wasn't like this before, but as I got older, I'm like attached to all these things. And then you begin to unpack it all, right? Or let it go. And I really love what you said is like devour it and transmute it. Like that's cool. It's super cool. Um, and then you begin to connect to this, this light. And then when you get into the state of the light, which we, every single person that's listening to this and every single person in the world has access to these spaces. Yeah. If you just sincerely ask like, dear universe, please give me a spiritual experience for my highest good that will illuminate the best possible lifetime right now. Like you're going to be presented with tools and information to propel you into that state of consciousness. You know, that's just how it works. And the only reason this might sound weird or not make sense is because you haven't experienced it yet. But I promise you, this experience is probably in your next meditation if you're sincere yeah. enough. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
Well, it's funny because I was just on a podcast and someone asked me like, what are your, like, what are pieces of advice for, and I literally said breathing. Mm -hmm. And, and I also said, it's really simple. Start talking. I said, just ha close your eyes and have a conversation mm -hmm. with whatever it is you believe in. Like, you know, a God, a guru, it's science, air, could be yeah. someone who's passed away, a, a pet, but start talking even if it's in your head and watch how it all changes. It's a very simple way to connect that you don't have to sit there and meditate for 45 minutes to an hour every day to feel like to make that connection. You can just start having conversations. I'm like, they want you to talk to them, but we're all trained of like, it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. It's like, but you're, you're secretly talking to something anyway. So just acknowledge mm. that and mm. tap into whatever it is for you. It might be your favorite tree from when you were a kid. It might be you talk to a piece of scenery that you always envisioned, but it may be your grandmother who passed or your mom or your best friend or a lover or, or pet, like your best dog that you ever had, you know, and talk to them and ask, like you just said, like, show me what I need for healing. I think those were the words you just said, and you'll be really surprised what happens in that conversation. Yeah. I mean, even ask, say, hey, give me a sign, you know, I, it's like, it's Talk to me about that. a moment for you when you ask for a sign. Every single day for many, many years now, I, I do it. And every single time it delivers, it over delivers. And sometimes it's so abstract and there's like every single thing in the universe had to happen for this specific sign that has only specific meaning to me, for me to experience and to be empowered by, you know, um, you a lot one? of the time. Yeah. I mean, so my, my number is two, two, two. Um, that's a really funny story how I came across that number. I'm not going to tell it because it would freak everybody out on this call and then probably, you know, not make my stuff a little as credible. <laughs> 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 so we'll keep it at level one today. Um, but I, I was I was on the beach and I uh, I did this like kind of water healing. And, you know, some of this stuff can sound woo-woo, but if you look at the Essene Gospel of Peace, which is the Lost Dead Sea Scrolls that were taken out of the books of the Bible, the Lost Dead Sea Scrolls were the books in the Bible that gave the people the power to heal themselves. It was Yeshua or Jesus telling people to go and do purification rituals with the elements to clear the energy bodies and heal disease, right? Super powerful stuff. And one of the main things that Yeshua would tell people to do is, hey, go baptize yourself, but baptize yourself every single day for a month in the river and spend time in that water and that energy. I just got chills because I was literally thinking about this this morning of like, whatever, you'd finish the story and then I'll- Okay, you sure? Ahead. You can go ahead. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 go ahead. Sure, should be honored, you sure? I'll, I'll, I'll say it, but you finish okay. the story and then okay, I'll say I, it. I, I, okay, well, I'm gonna go into it, but if I don't say something, sometimes it's just like whoosh. Um, so uh, that being said, I was, I was doing this like really, you know, hilarious, but deeply sincere prayer. You know, if you, if anyone follows me around, the stuff I do just looks absolutely um, absurd in a way, you know, it's definitely not normal, but for me, I'm a sorcerer. I'm the coolest thing that I've ever, you know, it's ever been ever experienced, you know, the moment. Cause I'm always like, everything's imagination. Everything's play. Everything's for my highest good and healing. You know, like I'm consciously using items to then greater impact the world in the best way that I possibly can. And one of the things that I did before going into the ocean, I really felt into the connection that I, um, I had with somebody in my life. And I asked that I would give back their energy, reclaim back my energy, and then send my energy up to really be connected in that, uh, that vessel of light that you're talking about, like the brightest white light that I could ever comprehend. Right. And when I went into the ocean, I do this thing where I have my hands like this in prayer position. And then I, I go in a wave comes, I go back with the wave. I feel it wash over me. I come up and say, I am purified. I keep mm -hmm. walking. Another wave comes up. I come up from the ocean. I say, I'm purified. Right. So I'm baptizing myself three times. And then I walk back and I look at the ocean and I, my mind is completely still. And it's ex my consciousness is expanded as f in every direction, as far as I can imagine. And the ocean helps you do that because it's so vast. And then I do a little prayer and I'm really grateful for the healing that was just given to me by this in incredible element and, and by the, the energy that possesses it. And then immediately again, all my emotions start to come up. I just, I start bawling on the sand for probably 30 minutes. You know, it was, it was, it was so fun. Um, so it, fun. it was so fun. It was so good. I love a good cry. And you know, I wasn't always like that. I, I was a very badass, like college wrestler, you know, fighter that then learned how to be gentle and kind. Right. Mm. So when I have those moments, it's like, yeah, 
let's go. Like, this is the true strength here. Like, I already feel tears coming up. By the way, you probably shouldn't be walking around with tears in you. You should probably process those. But sometimes, like, I feel them <laughs> in the system. Um, but that being said, I asked, like, dear universe, please give me a sign um, to let me know that I'm in the right direction because, you know, I really want to do the best that I can. Um, you know, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. And every time I pray, I, I do my best to say for the highest good of all beings involved, you know. And you'll be uh, given really powerful information when you start setting that intention. We start including everybody in your prayer. So when you when I go back, there's this girl that's like delivering Postmates, um, so sweet. And she goes, "Hey, do you know uh, apartment two two two? Do you know where that is?" Mm. And I was like, "It wasn't the clock. The clock's like an easy one to get. It was just a random Postmates delivery at the apartment in my building, and it was like so specific, so in my face." And I was like. Let's go. You know, it's beautiful. It's, it's funny that you said that. I do feel like the iPhone has ruined angel the numbers. the beauty of getting angel numbers because it used to really be weird. Like if you happen to see the time somewhere, but now it's like you're seeing the time every single second. So of course oh. you're going to see 444. Four, four. Of course you're going to see 55. Five. Yeah. It is really funny. I'm like, so it's, it's, I only, it's funny. I only take the iPhone numbers to heart if it's like compounded with me seeing it elsewhere a lot. Then I'm like, okay, I get it. But I have, it's funny. I've kind of almost dismissed the iPhone angel number. We like should talk signs. about that sometime. Maybe we do a separate podcast to figure that out because I'm totally on the same page. I'm trying to I'm trying to process it because I really deeply give reverence to the angel numbers. But if they're just yes. popping up every hour, you know. And I know I'm looking at it because I know I'm addicted to my phone like everybody else. So it's and like I know whether I realize it or not, I'm constantly glancing um, and so, of course, the probability of me seeing the repeated numbers way higher than it used to be before I had an iPhone. Hundred <laughs> percent chance, yeah. I think it's so funny. No, I was thinking this morning. I was in the shower, and one of the things I try and do when I'm in the shower, I just quickly, like, super quickly, will do like a chakra cleaning, like if I can. And because, and I, so I was thinking about the water. And so when I got to my crown, I purposely like put my head in, mm. and. Um, and I was, it, what came to me and I'm not a big ocean swimmer. So it's funny that you said that I'm not a big, um, I, I have a weird phobia of things I can't see like in the ocean or lakes. So, I mean, if you bring me to like turquoise waters, I'm fine, but if anything mm -hmm. else, I'm like, Bleh. and so, but I was literally thinking about that of like, wow, it would be so cleansing and clearing and healing to swim in the ocean every single day or to at least go in and do like, I was literally having this thought of like, and then bringing it to baptism. I was having this whole thought in my head of like, wow, that must be a majorly healing thing that people don't even realize who do that every day. Don't even realize actually how healing it is. So it's funny that that was specifically what you brought up because yes. I mean, it is. So anyone who loves to do that or is not, weirded out like I am and you live by an ocean, go do it. I mean, especially the salt and between the salt and just nature and mother earth and the waters and the movements and the rhythms. I mean, all of mm. that is like mm. one big healing vortex, you know, mm -hmm. it like combines yeah. everything. Yeah. I'm like an energetic, like slut for experiences. <laughs> like when it's, when it's a good energetic experience, I'm spending time in it. Right. And and then to simplify that for people, like why is that important to go into a space that has good energy? Well, your energy, right? You have a unique makeup of energy. We have, you know, an energy system that's receiving and sending energy that's been programmed that makes up who you are. There's a unique fractal of, of consciousness that's expressing through you that goes into this kind of space around you. And within that space is emotions and uh, feelings and all these different things. And you can't see it, but it's there. And it's just what she said earlier, where you're feeling heavy. It's like you're, it's kind of like your energy just feels heavy, right? that's when you really need to double down and get into the ocean, get into the breath or get into meditation and clear out the denser emotions like, you know, anger, grief, sorrow, pain, whatever it is, clear that stuff out, alchemize it, transmute it into joy, into enlightenment, into peace, into love. Because once you do that, then you can solve any problem that you're experiencing. You can heal your relationships. You can, you can be the best version of yourself in every single moment of every day. And most importantly, when you create joy in the body, you're not taking that joy from anybody else. You're actually creating that signature essence into the world and you're creating more of that for everybody because we all harmonize with that energy. So it is the most important thing in the entirety of your experience is to take care of your energy at the core because mm -hmm. every single thing manifests from what's going on in the makeup of that constellation, you know? 
And I think people just don't understand the the importance of that. So let's bring it full circle. So your brother, who's, would you say he's in Japan? Did you say? Uh, South Korea. Oh, South Korea. Sorry. Um, South Korea firefighter. How does he manage his energy? And do you have this conversation? Because I mean, that's a whole different... Yeah, he's a he's a pro, and, and everyone it's just, it's so impressive, you know. And he he now has his days. He's he had like one, uh, you know, one behavior that was less productive, and then he continued to make decisions with that behavior. And then you know he had a little hard time for a while, and then he stopped before it got too bad. You know, again, his karma is a lot less intense than James and I's. Um, but he would just look at a tree; he'd be happy. He practiced joy. He's very kind. He dance all the time. So he's constantly moving energy. He's extremely positive. So he's thinking positive thoughts. And we know from neuroscience now that positive thoughts have positive neurotransmitters that get released in the body. Negative thoughts have negative chemicals that release in the body. And you can do your best to, when you think positively, the the actual manifestation is a chemical that gets released. So if you think your thoughts actually do create, because it's creating the physiological state that you're in, which is fucking cool as shit, right? Mm-hmm. And and Richard just has a simplified experience, you know? It's like, it's, it's pretty cool. And at some level, he has a simplified conditioning. And does that make him wiser in, than James and I? No. Does it make his experience probably more fun internally? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> So when you started kind of like, so you started teaching and kind of integrating all of this stuff in your early 20s, right? Yeah, you did it for a while. So how have you found, look, even as wise as you are, you know, the 20s is a tumultuous time of change, I find, for people in a great way. I always say the 20s are when you really start kind of shedding what doesn't work. And usually you shed it because it's in your fucking face a little bit. Sure. And, you know, a lot of people I feel like have identity comp, like identity, com- um, what should we call it? Crises a little bit in their twenties. Cause it's like, ah, who am I? I'm not in school. These are my friends. What's happening. You know, mm-hmm. people get really nervous about money, but they're only in their twenties. Like, it's a big, the twenties, I feel like emotionally is a mm. big, heavy time. So talk about a little bit going through kind of this in your 20s and also teaching and how that all has played out for you. Yeah. I mean, you you totally nailed it. I mean, it was out of necessity. I started teaching out of necessity. I've always been, you know, laser focused on anything that I decide to do and have been able to excel at it very fast because of how much effort I put into it. Um, and I also believe everybody can do anything. So it kind of gives me the power to do anything that I want. Um, that being said, it got so bad internally and i'm prone to kind of mental bipolarity and all these you know more intense depression and anxiety um but you say you're prone to it or you have it prone to uh more chaotic expressions i wouldn't Mm -hmm. say i have it i think it's there's a a piece of uh the experience that um can take over that has that but it's it's not something that um defines me or takes up a majority of my experience anymore right Um, and I could have been just blessed to figure out how to do that, but I also devoted every single second of my life to figure out what happiness was to me, like figure out how my mind works, figure out how my emotions work, figure out how to treat people, figure out how to treat my family, figure out how, who I want to be, figure out how I want to gain wealth. Like I was very hyper-focused. I'm like, I can't be happy if I'm someone in this lifetime that I don't enjoy. It's just not sexy to me. I don't see the point of material gain of giving away all my belongings three times, made a bunch xyz but if i don't really enjoy what i'm doing and how i acquired that thing then i can't have it in my life it doesn't matter how expensive it is and when i got to a point of okay i'm gonna die if i don't face these mental uh disorders right i'm I'm gonna die if i don't face this bulimia i'm gonna die if i don't face the steroid abuse i'm gonna die if i don't face the sluttiness was the bulimia linked to wrestling the, I was I got into I was sexually abused. Um, I'm not going to go into it it's for a, when I'm when I'm a little more famous, then I'll tell the story. <laughs> I don't want to let it out now, but it's pretty in- intense stuff. We'll do a I, little. We'll do a little. Yeah, so yeah. you were sexually abused when you were a kid, or uh, no, it's early twenties, and wow. um, very confusing. And immediately I started binging. Can I ask a question, and then you can tell me what you want to tell it by a woman or a man? Um, that's a good question. Can't answer that because that's a part of the story. <laughs> But it's it's a part of the story, and also um, there's so many there's so much of, there's such philosophical depth to what happened, and there's so much discovery that got created because of that experience. 
Um, and I'm, you know, someday excited to talk about it, but because of that, uh, experience, it, it like obliterated what I knew in life and what felt safe to me, right? Completely obliterated. So then immediately, you know, not wanting to feel what I was feeling, I got into these kind of different substances, su substances that then, you know, after a, you know, year of doing, throwing up and doing these things, you know, trigger warning to everyone. So if this is upsetting you, please take a time. If you feel your nervous system getting upset, just take a pause on the podcast and come back later. Um, I had to, I had to do something. I had to do something, you know, I, I had to figure it out. So, you know, a year or two, I'd read every a book a day. That was like my thing. I went to the library, like a hundred books, come back, wow. read a book a day. Um, very mind, right? I didn't, I didn't know anything about meditation. I didn't study anything. And then the day I did breath work, and I think we're a little bit out of time, but eventually I would love to come on and tell that story. Um, but this little gay man comes, he lives with me for a month and he takes me on top of a mountain and he can like harness the elements and like, it was the coolest thing. And everyone knows like when you're in a deep meditation, everything's working with you. Right. Yep. And he's just so in this rhythmic flow of this God consciousness state. And he puts me deep into this trance on top of this mountain. And for the first time in what felt like probably 10 years, I finally felt peace. I finally felt like myself. And, and this that was the first time you did breath work? First time I did breath work. Did it, it crack you open? Because breath work, I find the first time you do it, it's like you can then be in a puddle of tears. Not that time. That was a more peaceful presence, like clarity. Mm -hmm. And the journey of breath work has brought up every single probably texture of experience that you know we could access as humanity. And that's all within us, right? Everything is within each and every one of us. And breath work has the power to kind of help you look at the stuff and bring up the emotions that have been suppressed from this lifetime and your ancestral line. And then also your soul line of all the lifetimes you've ever lived, you know, even your future timeline, like you can tap into all of these things with the breath. Um, so yeah, I don't know really where I'm going with this, but um, I would say if, if your life's not hard right now, but you're not doing breath work, meditation, yoga, dance, or something that allows you to express yourself and heal, then eventually you're going to be in an aspect of your life where you're going to need something. I really recommend doing as much preventative work as you mm -hmm. can right now to then just have a really fun, amazing, healthy life. And so when you were in your twin kind of facing these demons a little bit, that's when you started finding the oh, stuff yeah. and then yeah. like transmuting it into teaching. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when I started working and I was like, wow, I just healed a bunch of stuff. And then I would, you know, I would help my family heal. Then I would help friends that were around me heal. Then I would help you know, I'd help them heal themselves. That's what's more accurate. And then I would just be like, okay, this is kind of cool. Like I'm affecting change in every single environment that I walk into. I'm making each place a little bit better than when I got there before. And I really love who I am. I was like, this is rad. All right. Can I teach this? Because I need to get a job anyways. <laughs> <laughs> and then that's kind of how it began. How do you like to bring, and then we'll, cause I know we're wrapping up, but yeah. we started by talking about relationships with your brothers and, um, how do you feel what you do then has really affected your relationships in general? Like, you know, we talked about cheating, but whether it be your friendships, like, what do you feel like happens? How do people come and go in your life? I guess is a good as a question. Hmm. Mm. Um, well, I, I've gotten to a place of um, when I'm meeting people in general, I can, I can kind of see them as the first, as if I'm seeing from them for the first time. So even if I've known you for 10 years, I can kind of see you as you are in the moment. And that um, is always nice. So if something does happen, I'm able to forgive very effortlessly. Mm -hmm. It just feels natural because I've also forgiven myself for everything that I've ever done. Um, That's actually a very good point that when you get to a place of being able to forgive yourself, it becomes much easier to forgive other people. Yeah. Which makes life so much easier. So Guys, much I mean, I can't, I can't say it enough if you can forgive people your life is a lot smoother mm -hmm. keep going sorry <laughs> yeah and then so then how do i how do i interact with people now um mm, I, I guess i would say like the relationships are just precious um i guess now there's an aspect of every single person that you come across is extremely important and special and almost it feels like they're designed to evolve you or to love you or to support you or for you to be a, a, an impact on their lives in a special way right and then there's a knowing that each person that i'm interacting with is a version of myself and we're all connected so 
there's almost an urgency to not waste time when I'm experiencing the present moment with someone to give the best foot forward that I possibly can. And that doesn't need to be from a state of anxiety. It just means that, hey, we're one. We're in this together. I got you. You need anything? Like, I love you a lot. And letting that unconditional love be a foundation of the interaction and and then seeing how that kind of ripples out into the world. Um, so I think that's like the flow of it. Um, it's a lot of fun, I would say. Like have a lot of lot of fun. <laughs> have you seen like has it been hard for you? Have you seen friendships shift and change? Yes. As you have changed and evolved? Oh yeah. Yeah. There's been so many difficult relationships. Um and I look at them with so much love. Like there's nothing in my heart that's like perceiving anything that's necessarily um negative about the people that betrayed me you know it's just that is a betrayal it's okay i betrayed myself and that's what caused that relationship to happen and occur and now i'm going to be in more integrity with my decisions and actions moving forward you know it's very simple Mm. for me um that's pretty i mean you should actually emphasize that and say that again because i actually think (laughs) that well it's a really big that's a that's a biggie you like threw it off but that's a biggie (laughs) yeah you gotta keep it light you gotta keep it light it catches it hits it hits in the nervous system or it doesn't but Um, say that again because i do think it's important for people to recognize that difference of again it's really easy especially in relationships friendships lovers whatever it is family to blame and then to pull away versus what you're saying things naturally fall apart and shit happens it's not that shit doesn't happen but talk about how you put yourself in within that equation yeah yeah um i mean simply it's like you know no one's enlightened here right we're all doing our best that we can and everyone has their own stuff that they're bringing to the table when i um when i look back on the people that i've loved the most and the ones that have hurt me the most um, I see it so beautifully. I'm like, yeah, I really fucking loved you a lot. That was great. Like intense. And also you betrayed me, you know, you, you did something that for me really, really hurt me at the time and it doesn't anymore. And I get why you do that. And I accept why you do that. And most importantly, okay, how did I manifest that experience? Oh, well, there was an aspect of myself that I was betraying. I wasn't in full integrity with my words. I wasn't in full integrity with who I wanted to be. And it created a vibrational match of a friendship that then manifested this very painful experience for me to learn from. And now I know, and, yeah. and I will do better. And not because I have to, but because that's what I fucking choose to do. It's more fun that way, right? Yeah. So I love it because you're taking perk. yourself out of victim and you're also taking yourself out of, I mean, you're just, you're, Again, it's very empowering and it's the only way to create change and to evolve. Agreed. One, someone, I heard this on a talk and it completely blew my mind. Someone's like, you have to take responsibility for every single thing that's ever happened in the entirety of the world, in Oof. all of human history. <laughs> and I was like, he's like, even if an asteroid hits the love of your life and murders her, you have to take responsibility that you were not there to save her. Like that's the depth of responsibility that you need to take with every single, and I was like, wow. <laughs> But you'd have to be a very evolved person to do that because someone else would do that and it would be the most depressing thing. They wouldn't be able to function. Yeah. You know what I mean? It would be very... um, Well, question. Do you think that people naturally take... Oh, got it. Okay, I see what you're talking, the texture of that. Mm. For some people, they Mm -hmm. almost... They blame themselves for everything, which then becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, and then they manifest it in probably much more awful ways. But it's because mm. they yet don't know how to hold both things at the same time. Like part mm. of the strength of that is being going back to our initial conversation about cheating. Part of the strength of what you were talking about there is being able to say, I love myself and I'm a wonderful human who has done a shitty thing, and I can own and be both of those things at the same time and still be a whole human and see yourself as a whole human being who's always evolving and learning, right? The problem is I think when someone only sees themselves as a shitty thing, they probably start doing a lot more quote unquote shitty things because they don't know how to just hold it and be and then grow and keep expanding from it. So instead it becomes more contracting. Like I feel like it has the opposite effect. It contracts you. Same thing, just how can we process it? How do you have the ability? So my point is I I agree with that guy, even though it makes my brain explode, but I agree with him. But if you're someone who can't hold all those things and you start taking those things in responsibility, but you can't hold the idea of like, I may be part of this 
thing that's deemed negative in today's construct, but how can I, how can I be part of this thing that's deemed negative in this construct, but still be a whole human and a good human? Some people, that's what I think is the goal, right? That's what we're learning to do, but you have to like learn how to hold both those things because we're complicated. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, we can, yeah, just, just to continue to riff off that and we can, we can wrap up. I don't know how much time you have left, but there's, I always, I chunk it up to two things, the human stuff and then like the infinite consciousness, light, mm -hmm. soul, everybody's connected kind of energy. It's like this, whoa, it's amazing. What's real is that, right? And then what's fake is the illusion of the human experience. And there's many ways to explain why that's fake. And at any given moment, our light is going into the human experience and putting us in an illusion of us making believe that that is what it is. Even in the aspect of me taking full responsibility from the most powered place, that's still limiting compared to what I truly am. Mm -hmm. Right. Same goes for when I'm just only taking for responsibility from a state of pain. And when I realize that all of that stuff at the end of the day is le less productive, even the most enlightened decision that I could possibly do is not who I am, then it's easier to navigate and put yourself back just in the light. Yes. Just in the present moment. Right. But it is that is a hard thing for a lot of people to do. Well, no one tells us that's a, that's what's, ha what's happening. No one talks about this stuff. Like you're not constantly yes. at the coffee shop telling you like, oh, you're, you're crying about all this stuff happening to you. Well, you know, what about you just take one breath and just dissolve into light? You know, <laughs> like what if you just breathe golden light into your body? You know, again, this doesn't always work. There's aspects of we need to find the unique code of someone's heart to make them feel safe, to put themselves in this state. And everyone has access to these states of consciousness. Yes. And it's that tricky balance, as you know, when we've talked about it, some, like getting rid of things somatically, it is that tricky balance of not overriding the emotion, not overriding the shitty thing that happens so that you're not pushing it away by thinking like, okay, I've taken care of it with these positive thoughts. It's that it's living life with the positive thoughts, but also knowing the shit you carry um, and how can you, how can you dissolve it? And so it is such a, it's, it's a tricky balance and that's why it's, it's hard, you know, and that's why yeah, awareness I'm, 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 is the key. I'm not talking about thinking a certain way. I'm talking about the direct experience of being embodied in, in, in life. Yes. Right? Um, but to get because there. Because if, if you're thinking, yeah, that's, that's, there's, I mean, there's so many subtle like ways to like really get clear on this. Um, I guess like the way that I found to be really uh, simple that can make people not make people, but give them a pathway to understand this experience is if you look at the past, there's two ways to navigate it, either one through the direct reflection and healing of it, or mm -hmm. through the present moment and navigating the present moment also heals the past. And then when that past is healed, and it's kind of an ancient occult text to say you have, it says you want to heal, heal about 50% of the stuff that you've been through, right? Mm. Then you go into the present moment and you do your best to manage and purify, like you were talking about your energy channels, um, the best that you can in the present moment. And then from the state of that 50% being healed, the present moment being totally aligned and harmonized. And then you can kind of step into this timeline of the best possible case scenario. And I, what do you think? Is that a good way to explain it to people? Because yeah, no, I, I think it's helpful with like an understanding of this instead of us like trying to intellectualize it. <laughs> yeah, we're now we're like, <laughs> I don't want to confuse um, people. We're going to go so many different directions. We did, which I love, by the way. And it's um, no, I think it is that idea of you can, can you said it perfectly where you have so much control over creating your own life, right? Of creating your own manifestations of through your process of thought, through the process of assimilation, through mm. um, remembering who you truly are beyond kind of the physical incarnation that's here. Um, the trick is, but I think that's why this podcast exists. I think that's why people are searching is yeah. how do you keep yourself in that state and remembrance and also knowing that the reason it's hard and the reason it's tricky and it's not as simple, A, we're not taught mm -hmm. it, like you said earlier, mm -hmm. but B, we do carry, like I said before, we are very physical bodies. And so it's always this balance of how can we, which I think is what's fun about it, is like, how can you, Again, if you look at it as a game, like how can you find that balance so you get to wear this magnificent incarnation in a way that mm. embodies your light body simultaneously? That's when you're mm -hmm. like hitting home runs, right? That's when mm -hmm. we all feel super connected. That's when, yeah. like you said, the two two twos are everywhere and like flow is just crazy. You almost see the stars flowing in front of your face. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Now it's not 
for most people, it's not every single second of every single day. So it's like, it's mm -hmm. at least having that remembrance of being kind to yourself that it's not mm -hmm. like you're doing something wrong when you feel like, well, I don't get it. I can't do this. And it's not bypassing understanding that you might've had some shit that hurts or is there mm -hmm. shit that's heavy. Um, you're human, but that's yes. the beautiful carnival of it all. Like, you know, how what, can what's you yeah, thank you. That's so beautifully expressed. I love that, you know, you can, I can feel your depth of embodiment because of how you're kind of explaining things. What's a, you know, for Dentox, if someone's listening, like, okay, I want to process, <clears throat> I want to step into this process, right? I want to understand what these people are talking about. I want to be embodied in it. I want to deepen my practice of, uh, of what I understand in this conversation. Where would you guide someone in regards to what you're creating in the world so they can have this direct experience of what we're, what we're well, explaining? Well, it's funny. I mean, that actually brings us perfectly to the end of the podcast. It's why we do a personal practice, right? I mean, oh, so it's actually perfect timing. You just set yourself up because look, you said it earlier and I think you're right. There's a million different ways to like slice this, right? And I think the one thing Den Talks is about and the Den is about, and it's been since the day I even conceived it, is there is no one formula for anybody. Period, period, end of story. That's why I say don't get on the guru complex. Don't follow, think one person has all the answers because A, you have the answers. Someone might need to help mm. you discover them, but you have them. But besides that, you're always shifting and changing. You've talked a lot about that for yourself and what you need and what works for you now may shift and change what you need and what works for you later. And mm -hmm. so it's hard for me to say one practice because um, that's why I love the den. It's like, come and find the practice that works for you. And then also be open that there might be another practice that works for you, or maybe it's different things at different times. Um, it's always figuring out you, what's your formula? Who are you? Like mm -hmm. you were saying, what makes you happy? So that's really the core of what the den's about is your own self-discovery of understanding yeah. you have the strength, you have the power and figuring out what that means for you and not worrying and understanding that it's not going to look like the version that's sitting next to you or the version that's sitting next to you on the other side. It's always going to be different. And that's a beautiful thing. But anyway, um, you're amazing. Yeah. This has been great. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. I, I, I feel like I deepened my understanding of the world by talking to you. So I, Same. I, I had appreciate a... you, you doing that. That's the whole point of these talks is just for all of us to just kind of like, just figure more shit out, right? About ourselves. Yeah. So I'm so grateful you took the time. I know I'm running in to teach too. So we're both running, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. And Brian, you're awesome. Okay. I love you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You've got the power.